link for the part of the group. So yesterday we have started with our particular introduction of the subject that is quantity surveying and valuation. Here we have discussed introductory part of the different chapters that we are going to learn through this particular subject. There are total chapters. I'm just reminding the previous part for two to three minutes so that you will get uh, brush up with the yesterday's knowledge, whatever we have uh, discussed. So, total we are having eight chapters. The first section deals with the quantity estimation, while the second section deals with the contracts, tenders, and valuation processes. So, total eight chapters we are having. Then course outcomes we have discussed for each particular for all these eight chapters then we have begin with this uh, definition of uh, estimation what is estimation once again we'll revise some part estimation is nothing but the process of calculating the quantities and the cost which is required for the construction work so whatever the quantities and the cost whatever we require for that construction activity that quantities of the material and the cost for each material which is required we are going to calculate and that particular process we called it as a estimation process then quantity surveyor is nothing but the person who is responsible for making or for completing the whole process that is of estimation he will prepare the estimate based on the drawings whichever he is having and based on the measurements which have been there in that particular plan. And also he is going to prepare the bill of quantities that is BOQs. Then uh, the part which is related with the accounts that is current and final payments, payments of the payment for material, then payment for labors, payment for any other particular activity. Whatever the duties of the quantity server that is preparing the bill of quantities, that is BOQ, we called it as then preparing the part payments during the interval of the uh, execution of the work, then bill adjustment and giving legal advice that is nothing but the arbitrator. So that part we have completed. Then the most important part that is been asked in your examination that is why we are going to prepare the estimate, purpose of estimation. Once again, we are going to revise it for some time. That is to assess the volume of the work which is required. Then to arrange and organize the material, manpower and the equipment, tools and plans which are necessary for the project, we require the estimate. Then to fix the project completion period that is within stipulated time 
we have to complete our project again we require the estimate then to ascertain the fund which is required again we require the estimate to justify the investment that is our benefit cost ratio should be greater than one so to get that particular benefit we again require the estimate again to invite the tenders and preparing the bill of quantities we require the estimate then to obtain the administrative approval and necessary technical sanction again we require the estimate and for valuation of any particular property it may be existing property or an open land definitely it is mandatory for us that we should have the estimate with us so again the purpose is very important for us to know why we are going to go for making the estimate then what are the site conditions which are going to affect the cost of the project here we are discussing the overall cost so we have to consider all the factors which will affect the overall cost of the project overall uh, what are the factors site affecting factors are nothing but our first is nothing but the manpower that we are having machine power that we are having then type of construction method that we are going to adopt then quality of labor and labor output varies then weather conditions definitely it depends on the weather also how we are going which technique we are going to adopt for our construction and based on that our overall cost will hamper then ground condition as we have discussed yesterday that is whether it is having a black cotton soil we are having or we are having a hard maroon we are having soft soil we are having wet or we are having porous sand cohesive or non cohesive soil so again depending upon the soil conditions that is ground condition our estimate will definitely vary and definitely it will affect the overall cost of the project because in case of the weak soil we have to invest extra amount for the soil stabilization purpose and again if our base is also again weak of weaker materials that then again we have to stabilize our base also so definitely for the improvement ground improvement techniques we have to add extra amount and that will again hamper our overall cost of the project so ground conditions definitely it will affect the overall cost of the project then the work which is in open ground or as in fields uh, if it is in heavily crowded area definitely we will face the transportation problem again it will require, it will hamper our overall cost of the project but if again our project is at 20 kilometers away from our native place then transportation charges may increase in that case so again our project cost will vary then project cost is also dependent on the source of availability of the sufficient material which is of good quality definitely our material should be of good quality so the source of availability of the sufficient supply of the materials it will definitely hamper that particular quality of the material then availability of the construction machinery again that will affect that particular uh, quality of the material so if the material we have taken it on the rent it will increase the overall cost of the project because the contractor is not having his own machineries he will going to take it on the lease or on the rent and definitely he will charge extra for that particular purpose but if he is having own machinery again definitely there is chance of some bargaining in that particular case and it will affect the project cost then access to the site as i said earlier if our site is too long and it is having very poor access then again that will affect the cost of that particular project so these are some site conditions which will affect the overall cost we are just rewinding yesterday's part now we will begin with the next part of this particular chapter that is what are the essential qualities of a good estimator now after completion of B you are going to start your own business after gaining some experience so being an estimator being an engineer whenever you have started your project you should have you the estimate with you you should able to read the drawing very clearly and you should able to understand the drawing thoroughly please remember our construction sector needs the thorough knowledge of understanding the drawings i found many students many people 
were not able to read the drawing. That means whatever the things which are being mentioned in that particular drawing. If you are unable to read the drawing, you are not going to start your work at any cost. That means you don't know where the column position is, where the beam position is, whether it is a continuous slab, whether it is a discontinuous slab, whether it is a one-way slab, whether it is a two-way slab. So for deciding the one way or two way slab, we should know the conditions LX by LY greater than two or less than two. So the basic knowledge we should possess. And as like, if we have to become a good estimator, what qualities we should have, that we are going to discuss here. So please remember the basics always with you, you should keep it you. And you should have a thorough knowledge about the understanding or reading the drawing. If the plan is in your hand, you should have a we should thorough knowledge yes sir this is the plan i am having this will be the positions of the columns these are the numbers c1 c2 up to cn and number of columns it may be then b1 b2 whether it is s1 indicates continuous slab whether s2 indicates one way slab or two way slab whatever the notations being given you should able to identify it you should able to read the drawing where are the positions and based on the positions you are directly implementing the actual Actually, you are taking the points and you are going to start your work. So it is very important that you should have the knowledge to read the drawings at first. If you don't know the schedule of reinforcement, schedule of openings, where the D1 is there, door, door size number one, where is D2, we are going to put it. So it has been mentioned, what is my um, carpet area, what is my built up area, what is my plinth area, what is my total area. If you are not able to understand the drawing, then it will be difficult for you. So we should first quality, we should able to understand, we should able to have a thorough knowledge about the understanding or reading the drawings. That is the first quality you should have. Then a knowledge of detailed construction work. A good estimator should have a knowledge of detailed construction work. Whatever the construction activities which are going to happen, we should have a brief knowledge about that. Then experiencing construction work. It is not like that if you want to become an estimator, but you, you don't have any kind of experience with you. So it is difficult for you to start your own business and you being recognizing as a good estimator. So for gaining the that particular quality, you should have the experience in the construction work. Then you should have the information about the materials which are required. Then machineries which are required then overhead problems and cost of all points now definitely this part is very important having the information about material which has been required now on while working on the site what category of the material that i require whether i am going for opc 53 grade of cement whether it is required whether i require coarse aggregate of such x y z quantity whether i require fine aggregate of x y z quantity whatever it may be. So you should have a thorough knowledge about the materials that is being required. Then machinery, for which work, which machinery is being required. If you are going to, you, if you have casted a slab and you have to make a uh, compaction for that particular slab, whether you are using needle vibrator, whether you are, you are using surface vibrator, the choice will depend on you, but definitely knowledge should be with you. If the column is there, definitely I will go for the needle vibrator. If the slab is there, I will go for the surface vibrator. So that for gaining such techniques, yes, which machinery I require. And again, for which category of the machinery, uh, which category of the work I require, which machinery, you should have the information about it. Then overhead problems. Now, while working on the site, you are going to face many problems. These are not mentioned anywhere in that particular book, in the plan or anywhere. But at actually while working on the site, you are facing such problems. The problems are related with the safety, basically. The problems is relating with the transportation of the material. If you are going for a G plus 10 building and you don't have a ropeway, you don't have a G plus 5 building and if you don't have a ropeway to carry your material from the ground floor to the fifth floor. Overhead problems, smaller problems. Um, basically, like uh, suppose you have to take some printouts, the one definitely office should be there, recognized office should be there, where all facilities of printing, Xerox, scanning the documents, preparing the DPR for that particular project. So, these are some problems, labor problems. 
so all such problems you are going to familiar in the upcoming time and definitely you have to tackle with all such problems so you should have the information about what problems we are going to face on site the problem may be related with the availability of the material then cost of all kinds what what will be my total expenditure for this particular project now suppose i have made an estimate of rupees 10 lakh but while working on the site i realize my estimate goes beyond 10 lakh rupees so in that case what you are going to do you require extra cost you require extra money so what you are going to do so again for such problems you should have the information about the construction work and the pro associated problems which you are going to deal while working on the site then being a good estimator you should have a good judgment with regard to the different localities different jobs and different workmen so you should have a good judgment in with respect to the different localities now how it has been there if you are working away from or maybe in the vidar region you are from solapur and you are working in the vidar region so you must be familiar with the local conditions the temperature condition the local conditions whether the material availability then availability of the workmen different kind of laborers we are having maybe they are maybe skilled workers they are maybe unskilled workers so different workmanship you are going to deal with different localities with different temperature conditions environmental conditions you are going to deal with so for dealing with this you should have a good judgment with you yes this is the condition so with respect to the this local condition i have to complete my work in this fashion then selection of a good method for preparing an estimate now as we have you discussed yesterday also there are different methods to prepare the estimate it may be a detailed estimate it may be approximate estimate a revised estimate supplementary estimate any category of the estimate we are going to select the good method it may be through the center line method or it may be through pwd method so we should have a good method for preparing the estimate based on the site condition and based on the type of construction that we should have then ability to careful thorough hard working and accurate so there is no chance to commit any mistake while working on the site definitely at the initial phase when you are working on the site you are going to commit or you are going to do some mistake by default you are going to do some mistake so you should be very careful about making any mistake please think once again before doing any work if you are facing some problem ask to your seniors ask to the juniors or the support colleagues which are available while working on the site but don't make any mistake so that it will hamper your particular job so you should have the ability to carefully and thoroughly understanding of the situation and understanding the drawings then type of execution that you require and then you are going to start your work then we should have the ability to collect satisfy uh, sorry classify evaluate the data which are relating with the estimation so ability to collect and classify and evaluate the data which is related with the estimation in this particular part what you are going to focus on now you are going to prepare the estimate so what you are going to focus on you are going to focus on the different parameters or uh, we call the specifications which are associated with the construction activity some specifications like suppose excavation so for excavation which information i need so after excavation then pcc bed is there so which information i need to collect whether i am having length width depth i am having with this in the cross section it will be clearly mentioned the dimensions of that particular footing or dimensions which are been there for the excavation then where is my plinth level at what height it is been there it is above 0.6 meter on the ground floor or it is at ground floor level it is above at some particular height from the ground floor level so you need to collect all the data which are related and which are needed for making the estimate then type of the slab suppose there are two or three different slabs within there some slabs are continuous some slabs are discontinuous some slabs are maybe one way some slabs are maybe two way slab column sizes are different at some point we are having column size 230 by 230 mm 
at the exterior part of the building we are having column size maybe more than 230 that is 300 by 300 mm the beam size the depth of beam will vary at some point the depth of plain beam the, sorry the height of plain beam will vary at some point so whatever the different dimensions we are having we have to collect it we have to assemble it in our particular measurement sheet and then we are going to prepare the instrument so we should have the knowledge to collect to classify to categorize and to evaluate the data which are relating with this particular estimation then what you require you require the ability to visualize the process and all the steps during the process of construction so what different particular steps that i am going to apply while completing this particular site so what are the different steps that you should know for making or for completing a project in successful manner you require schedule for each and every particular day once again i am going to repeat this will help you in future while working on the site always make the scheduling of the work which you are going to complete for the next day that means on the next day at 10 or 10 am when you are you are going to start your work at first you are going to complete the column work at first you are going to complete the excavation part at first you are going to complete the painting work what are the different works that we have so for that particular work we are going to prepare the steps different steps so that particular different steps are nothing but making a schedule of that particular day for the next day you have to you need to prepare the schedule of each and every day that schedule includes any particular task which you are going to perform suppose in the morning session you are going to complete the excavation work in the afternoon session you are going to complete some other work staircase it may be anything in the evening session you are going to complete this particular part it may be casting that is preparing of the concrete and then casting it in some part that is at beam level or footing and extra any other work so you need to step wise you need to schedule that particular activities day by day every day you need to prepare that schedule that we call it as a, uh, we are going to present it in our bar charts that is been again you have to uh, you are going to observe in any particular office you are going to observe that bar chart in that bar chart schedule is been there so on the 20th uh, sorry today that is suppose uh, 16th of june so on 16th of june i am going to complete this activity 17th of june i am going to complete this activity 18th of june i am going to complete painting work 19th of june i am going to complete plastering 20th of june i am going to complete etc so whatever the different work you are going to carry it out you need to prepare the schedule for the same work and then you can start your particular construction activity so that you will be recognized as a good estimator yes you know you know the different steps which you have to carry it out and you have to apply it while working on the site so break down the work in the different steps and then start to work on it that will help you some next again some qualities we are going to discuss that is before preparing the estimate the estimator should visit the site and make a study of conditions there that is for example if the construction of a large building is planned the estimator or his representative should visit the site now this is very important while working on the site what are the steps now sir you are telling us that uh, we have to prepare the step but which is our first step and which will be our last step we are totally unaware about that so definitely in the upcoming few lectures i will detail uh, you detail so uh, give you the summary about the, what are the different steps starting from site clearance to the giving the key to the owner so what are the different steps that we have to learn or the different step that we are we will go through that so i will discuss that particular so before preparing the estimate the estimator should visit the site uh, one important point if the meeting if there is any problem if you are not able to join or if meeting ends in short time then again you rejoin it 
if the meeting ends in a short time everyone please note again you rejoin it i will send the link and i will again restart that particular meeting if, meanwhile if any problem persists so before preparing the estimate the estimator should visit the site and make the site conditions if the construction of large building any building my opinion the building may be it may be for a, it may be a single room you are going to construct or it may be a large building you are going to construct you should visit the site at first whenever you are going to visit the site at first then and then only you will plan how the construction style will be what are my local conditions which are available at that particular point what are what is the local availability of the material you should have you will get some idea about the local conditions if you visit the site before starting the actual construction you know the local conditions very well and then you can plan your particular activity so first step definitely you take small work or you take a big large work any work you at first visit the site study the local conditions in detail what problems you are going to face if you have started their work over there then you can plan that particular work in a proper manner then note the location of the proposed building that is again mandatory step we should have the knowledge about the location of the building whether it is in slum area rural area urban area whatever the area being there then get the data about the data which is available regarding soil conditions so you are going to carry out some simple geo uh, test that you are perform already perform in geotechnical engineering so the soil test basically whenever you are working on the site i will explain you should conduct core cutter test you are going to take the core sample then you are going to test then you should able to analyze uh, that is you are going to able to determine its properties like the uh, uh, omc mdd that is optimum moisture content maximum dry density specific gravity of the soil then strength parameters it may be shear strength it may be wind shear then confined compression strength basic physical properties soil physical properties swelling of the soil um, specific gravity then the most important particle distribution that is gradation of the particles so you need to collect the some soil samples over there you can take core cutter sand replacement any method you will go for but in most of the site you will observe core cutter is being taken so you should get again you should have the knowledge about the percentage compaction whether it is 95% compacted soil you are having whether it is 96% compacted whether it is just 80% compacted soil so percentage compaction i am just um, telling some tests which are essential while working on the site huh? if you have any queries and any doubts you can put it in the chat box please feel free to ask me any doubt which are we are discussing so whatever the test you have performed in geotechnical engineering the same test we have to perform while working on the site geotechnical test as we have discussed like specific gravity then particle size distribution co analysis gradation then uh, swelling properties then uh, liquid limit plasticity index plasticity uh, these are mandatory tests liquid limit and plasticity index one must know where before starting of any project it may be a road project or it may be a building project so liquid limit and plasticity index we should have we should have the omc and mdd values with us we should have the percentage compaction so all such basic whatever the techniques or test you have performed in geotechnical engineering this data should be there available should, uh, this data should be available with you before starting of any project that means you have to visit the site you have to take the samples then you have to test the soil samples and then you can yes sir these are the soil conditions so based on the soil conditions this is my style of construction type of footing that you are going to adopt it may be shallow it may be deep foundation whatever it may be but soil testing and other material testing is a very important parameter for the, any particular project then make a sketch of the site showing all the important detail that is uh, drawings basically in this particular sketch we are dealing with the layout first we should have the layout of that particular plan then we should have the detailed drawings all the drawings structural drawings it may be your plan elevation section then still detail planning structural design is there so we should have a sketch you are going to make the sketch of that particular site and then you are going to start it 
then obtain the information about the light power and water again very important for execution of work if you don't have the water how you are going to prepare the if you don't have the light with you how you are, how you are going to prepare the concrete so that is more important please mute yourself ashish i think someone is speaking so you should have the knowledge about the availability of the electricity over there then power and water so based on this you should uh, yes you should have the plan yes no sir there is interruption of the electricity many times while working on the site or at that particular point so you should have the plan with you if light interruption is there what other alternative you can suggest because if there is no light no power and no water you are not going to complete your construction activity water is essential parameter in our construction sector it is one of the essential part which is required for making the concrete it may be a drinking water tap water or it may be other so water that is been required then secure information about the banking facilities yes if you want to become a estimator you should have the knowledge about some banking sector or account section that is in relate in relevance with the banking what we we require we require the bank clearance certificate being an estimate yes in your in the bank you should have a good transactions you have not forfeited any kind of bank loan installment you have you are having a good bank record track record transaction record then what are the loan what is the processor process for obtaining a loan for a particular project what are the documents that we need to submit in the bank for getting the loan so it may be mortgage or um, it may be any other category of the loan mortgage loan or any other category of the loan so what are the different categories of the loans what are the different documents that we require for getting the loan what documents we need to submit for uh, starting the construction activities for gaining the loan so we should have some information or some knowledge about the banking facilities uh, again in upcoming few chapters we are going to discuss that in detail also then note the conditions of the streets which are leading to the railways and material dealers basically road connectivity and rail connectivity that is one part if you have started your construction site 20 kilometers away from a particular urban area or rural area you should have a good connectivity of the roads as well as the rail if not possible rails at least road connectivity should be there so that transportation is going to happen and it will go lead to the business spreading which is going to happen then investigate the general efficiency of local workmen so whatever the local workmanship you are going to available you are going to get while working on the site you should have the knowledge about that workman local workman and efficiency of that particular workman whether i am having a good skilled worker workmanship these are the my unskilled workers these many are my skilled workers this is my particular contractor so whatever the manpower that you are going to take along with you while completing a site and for being recognized as a good estimator you should have the efficiency for local workmanship that is what is their power what is their strength of actually working while working on the site so these some essential quantities which are been required for uh, gaining that particular uh, for recognizing as a good estimator so please remember such things while doing uh, for making uh, and um, recognizing yourself as a estimator good estimator in future so we will begin with the next part of this particular chapter that is what are the different types of the estimates what are the different types of the estimates now while working on the site you are going to deal with the different categories of the estimate now we are just uh, at first we will introduce some part then we will begin with this first category of the estimate we called it as approximate estimate or rough estimate 